Coming up on DTNS, Google brings AR directions into malls. Arm has a new architecture for the first time in 10 years, and LinkedIn is now for creators. Zeus. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, March 30th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Also in Los, Los oh, I can't speak. Also in Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. <laughs> And the show's producer, Roger Jane. You'll have to excuse all of us. Uh, we just spent uh, a good time uh, talking about the nature of comedy on Good Day Internet. It's no laughing matter, folks. Might even be banned in some parts of the world. If you want to find out more about that, become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Apple announced it will hold its virtual Worldwide Developers Conference from June 7th through the 11th. The event is free to all developers with the tagline, Glow and Behold. Mm, go, go, okay. Xiaomi announced its first foldable, the Mi Mix Fold, with a 6.52-inch exterior screen, and then it unfolds into an 8.01-inch 4x3 OLED panel. Yes, it has that liquid lens camera that we talked about that can focus down to 3 centimeters and offers a 3x optical zoom. The Mi Mix Fold is available for pre-order in China right now for 9,099 yuan. That's around $1,521 US, shipping April 16th. Xiaomi also confirmed it will spend $10 billion to set up a wholly owned subsidiary market for an electric vehicle over the next 10 years. Xiaomi CEO Li Jun will be the CEO of the car unit, as well as all of Xiaomi. Xiaomi faces stiff competition just inside China, uh, not even bringing Tesla into it. You got Baidu, Geely, BYD, NIO, and Xpeng Motors all making EVs in China as well. Spotify announced the acquisition of Betty Labs, makers of the sports-focused audio chat room app Locker Room. In a blog post, the company says it plans to evolve and expand Locker Room into an enhanced live audio experience for a wider range of creators and fans. Resizable bar. That's the feature of PCI Express that lets a game access the full frame buffer and increase your frame rate up to 10%. So put simply, it makes games look better. NVIDIA has launched it. Uh, it already launched it on the RTX 3060, but now it's launching support for resizable bar on all the 30 series desktop CPUs. It works if you have an AMD Zen 3 CPU or one of Intel's 10th or 11th gen processors. It doesn't work on all games though. NVIDIA pre-test games to make sure the performance actually increases. 17 games are currently supported, but there's more to come. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission announced it will not seek a Supreme Court review of a federal appeals court decision that found Qualcomm's business practices were not, in fact, anti-competitive. The FTC sued Qualcomm back in January of 2017, won its initial trial, but then the decision was reversed by a three-judge panel on the U.S. appeals court in San Francisco. All right. I've actually been going out in the world more recently, which means I need maps so, Sarah, tell me what the new Google Maps stuff is. Well, it's kind of cool, depending on where you are. Google Live View, it's worked outside for a while. If you're not familiar or you kind of forget about it, it's that feature that lets you hold up your phone if you're out and about, and in certain places will overlay a view of what's around you with lines and arrows to help you navigate. The feature now works inside in certain places as well. Google Maps Live View augmented reality directions are available in certain malls, airports, and transit stations, such as in Tokyo, in Zurich, uh, Switzerland, as well as some malls in Chicago, Long Island, Los Angeles, Newark, San Francisco, San Jose, and Seattle. So quite a few in the U.S., a couple internationally. But the company says more cities are on the way. Maps will also switch the tabs for different methods of travel to a list that you can now choose from with your most popular options at the top of the list. It used to be that you were having to scroll a little bit more, so information hasn't really changed, but the UI is a little bit nicer. Later this year, Maps in the US is also getting a new route option that will optimize for lowest fuel consumption if you're going from point A to point B. And this June, users in France, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, and the UK will all get alerts when traveling through low emission zones. Google's also adding an air quality layer to maps, coming first to India, the US, and Australia, and grocery pickup tool launching this summer in Portland, Oregon. Now, it, it, it may be a minute before I, I really need to go into a mall. I'm uh, a little offended that we didn't get transit stations in Los Angeles. We, we do have them. And I, that's something I absolutely could use. Really? Mm. Uh, 
But yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, I've been inside. I can confirm. They're uh, actually quite nice. They are. Depending they're, on where you are. It's yeah. a quite, quite a useful system. But mm. the thing that got me was the air quality, because I do live in Los Angeles. And with the fires, not, not so much the smog anymore, but the fires, air quality has become a regular thing to check uh, at certain times of the year. So I like that one. What about you, Lamar? Did anything catch your eye here? Yeah, I really like the the um, the grocery tool. So I read it more on it. So it's Fred Meyer, uh, which is uh, Kroger owned in, in Portland, Oregon. So basically, ah, okay. uh, if if you're getting your groceries picked up, you'll share your information with the store, so they can actually see you on the map. So even if you're stuck in traffic or whatever, maybe they know not to bring out your perishables right away, or if you're mm. if you're coming quicker, they'll they'll have your groceries ready. But all of the is I I feel like this technology has kind of been out. I feel like when I've gone to Whole Foods here and done pickup. They've had a similar type of thing where, where you know they would ask me, you know, you know, hey, you leaving the house now, and I always thought they were tracking me as I was as I was driving because because the person no. was al always there right when I pulled up. So you know, you're right because Ralph's uh, has, which is also Kroger owned. So the same mm -hmm. thing as the Fred Meyer one, uh, has, has location tracking on its app for when you do pickup. Cause I used to do pickup all the time at Ralph's. Uh, and, and so, yeah, they were already doing it. I think the, the thing is they're also now doing it in Google maps, which more people use well, inside the maps. That way okay. you don't have to launch. You don't have to remember to launch the grocery store app. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. Honestly, the, 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 the maps live view, I had kind of forgotten about it. That is not something I've launched and used recently at all. But the idea that it would be in places that I, I would <laughs> hopefully someday I will travel again and be in an airport somewhere and be like, huh, don't speak the language. Kind of confused. Where do I go? Something like this could be extremely helpful, especially when you're maybe trying to avoid having to flag somebody down and say, hey, I, I need some help. Um, the, more, the more kind of options that you have especially in an app that you're using all the time that 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 appeals to me yeah no the honestly I, I I was making uh light earlier about la not getting the transit stations but the transit stations that I have been in that I needed this the most were in Tokyo uh oh because, for sure you know uh yeah. Shinagawa station Shinjuku all they're huge they're huge and it's really hard to figure out even with signs that are in English and they have them it's really hard to figure out where you need to go sometimes so yeah I, I had the helpful. I had the same experience in Tokyo specifically where I was like I'm quite quite lost right now yeah <laughs> I need help arm arm and uh the the chips arm announced its first major new chip architecture in 10 years called arm v9 uh, and it is backwards compatible with good old fashioned ARM V8 that we've had since 2011, but it adds some new security, AI, signal processing, and performance features. ARM V9 introduces confidential compute architecture, uh, which allows the concept of realms. Realms will let a developer write an application where the data can be kept from the rest of the system, from the operating system, from other apps. That way only the realm manager software can see the data. And if another part of the device were somehow breached, it wouldn't immediately be able to get at that data. This is particularly important for companies who use cloud services, especially in like health or finance. It helps prevent an intruder or even an employee breaking into an Amazon, Google, or Microsoft hypervisor and peeking at customer data. Scalable Vector Extension 2, or SVE2, extends the AI workload capability of the architecture beyond just high-performance chips. They had SVE in, in V8, but V9 now gets it on all the architectures. SVE2 can enable digital signal processing capability for things like image processing, uh, Internet of Things, smart home stuff. ARM thinks this will improve AI performance even when it is done outside the CPU in like a GPU or a neural processing unit or something like that. But the bottom line for many of you will be the promised 15% gain in computer power this year and an additional 15% the year after for mobile and infrastructure CPUs. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I I think the relevant the relevant parts are faster, more secure chips in your stuff. I mean the the whole idea of chip architecture. I think you know sometimes I have to sort of remind myself that this is something that a eventual company like Apple with an M1 chip can use, or maybe decide to you know circumvent certain things because there might be. A, an end user experience that 
that is on Apple and you know they've they've licensed the architecture to do with it what they'd like. So why would a company not want to use any of these advances from ARM? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it gets really complicated with ARM, right? With Intel, up until they just recently said they'll start doing using their fabs to make other chips, Intel designed the architecture, it made the chip design, it built the chip. Like, if you were talking about an Intel chip, you didn't have to think about this stuff. With ARM, everybody gets the architecture, right? That's, that's what you're paying for when you get an ARM chip. But not everybody uses the ARM design. Uh, so Roger had a really good way of, of, of describing it when we were prepping for the show. Uh, he said, it's a little bit like the architecture is the, the building code, right? You, you can only put pipes in certain places. You can only run electrical in certain places and you have to build to code, but the house can be different. So Apple may not decide to use ARM's design. They may design their own house, which they do. And those designs can eke out a bunch of performance gains as well. So the performance jump for an Apple chip might not be as much as somebody who was using stock design uh, from ARM. So it's not about design here so much as it is about the architecture. I actually understood that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank Roger. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about PayPal. All PayPal right. PayPal will let you. you <laughs> PayPal will let U.S. users use cryptocurrency holdings to pay online merchants in the coming months with a feature it calls. Check out with crypto. First, you'll need to have some Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or Litecoin in a PayPal digital wallet. Now, when selecting check out with crypto, choose which cryptocurrency you want to spend it, and it will be automatically converted to a fiat. That's that, is that the word? Fiat currency to make the purchase. That conversion means it's available to all merchants who support PayPal. PayPal will not charge a transaction fee to use crypto. So, my so. Oh, yeah, explain, please. The, the downside is you're going to have to have the crypto in the PayPal wallet. And if you already own it somewhere else, you're going to have to make sure that you're not paying too much gas if it's Ethereum. But I guess they're not doing Ethereum here, so it won't matter. Uh, but, you know, there's a there's a charge to your Bitcoin transfer, to transfer fee of right? some kind. Yeah, well, it's, it's it's not even uh, a transfer fee. It's it's like the way Bitcoin works when you transfer. The system always takes a little out for proof of work, et cetera. Uh, if it's already in PayPal, though, this is genius. Like, if you've got cryptocurrency sitting there in your PayPal account right now, because last October when they launched it, you started adding it, uh, then this is going to make it easy to use that to spend because merchants don't have to even know about it. Merchants don't have to bother with it uh, because it gets converted to fiat currency on their end. So all as far as they're concerned, you're paying them dollars or euros or, or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. But you get to spend that coin that you kept in your PayPal wallet. That's huge. So, so this is just so I understand this. This is like if I had a Coinbase account, PayPal right. is acting like like a holder of my of my crypto. Yes, correct? the PayPal digital okay. wallet is very similar to that exactly. Okay, and then okay, now excellent. what they're doing is saying instead, what if Coinbase were also the accepted payment method everywhere, and nobody had to sign up to do it? That's what pay PayPal's taken. Like every uh, a lot of merchants, thousands and thousands of merchants take PayPal. So now that you've put your wallet, your crypto wallet with us, let's hook those two up. I mean, so, it just, so you, listen, I, I get that this is, it's a big deal. At the same time, and I use PayPal for everything. It's connected to a bank account that I have. And, you know, with any luck, I've got some money in it when I want to pay for something. And, you know, the pay, whenever I see the PayPal button, I'm like, yes, okay, super easy. This is going to be, you know, the kind of a one-stop um, transaction. But to have crypto, which I don't have any crypto, but if I did, to choose PayPal in order to have that, um, you know, ease of use versus quite a few other places that I could hold that money is, you know, it's giving PayPal a lot of power. Mm. Not necessarily a bad thing, but right. that's what it is. So, so that's a really good point. Uh, you're going to want to put your cryptocurrency in PayPal because, hey, why wouldn't you? It makes it easier to pay for things. But also now PayPal has pot potentially a, a lot more power over cryptocurrency. That is interesting. Yeah. Uh, you like hearing us talk about this kind of story? Uh, have you been like thinking, gosh, but why didn't they talk about this other story? Well, you could wait to see if we talk about it on the rest of the show, or you could also submit it in our subreddit before the show. Submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. LinkedIn is adding a feature to cater to video creators called a video cover story. 
Uh, you add a short video to your LinkedIn homepage that LinkedIn says kind of acts like a cover letter, but video. I think he even used a Harry Potter analogy because it magic, your picture magically comes to life. Anyway, there's also a new option to select your preferred pronouns, uh, which is nice. Anyone can now choose the creator mode, a more open version of its influencer network. You have to get chosen by LinkedIn to qualify as an influencer. Anybody can say, I'm a creator. And that lets people follow you and get a feed of content that you post on LinkedIn. A lot of people may not realize that folks are doing essentially like blog posts uh, and can post videos and audio on, on LinkedIn. So uh, this kind of brands you as that and says, hey, this is a creator. You might want to follow them. Uh, also, freelancers are getting the ability to attach a service page to their profile. So separate from their resume, they can list like, oh, these are the kinds of things I do. Uh, I'm, I'm a building contractor and I do bathroom remodels and plumbing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, LinkedIn is also extending its free online training in 10 professional areas until the end of the year. That was a COVID thing that they made available for free. They're going to keep making it free, free until the end of 2021. And LinkedIn also launched an app for Microsoft Teams called Career Coach that uses AI tools to help users identify a likely profession. I find this fascinating uh, because I'm not a LinkedIn user. I always associate it with corporate people, right? You know, not 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 people like me who you know freelance or creator. You know, so I I've never bothered with it. I know Microsoft owns it. I, I you know I know what it is. But uh, for the first thing I think is cool that you you know have a video message. You know, hi, I'm Lamar Wilson, and welcome to my page. And you know, it's it's, it's very cheesy. But but that could be a, a very good way to kind of stand out, you know, if you're trying to uh, get a job somewhere. So I, I like what they're doing here. I didn't know about the influencer network. I didn't know people can be creators. So I'm intrigued. Thanks to this. Thank you. Thank you for reading this. I'm going to kind of dive in a little bit more to, just to see if it's something that, you know, could benefit me or not. It mm. might not. But I mean, you know, it sounds I a lot it to out. me like. I don't know, if you stumble across a Patreon page and you're like, hmm, this creator seems interesting. Oh, look, there's a welcome video. Let me press play and find yeah. out a little bit more about them. Kind of the yeah. same idea. I also don't do a lot of networking on LinkedIn. I've always used it as my resume. It's probably pretty outdated. I haven't been there in a while. Every so often I will, I'll log in and be like, oh man, people are like messaging me here and I didn't mean to ignore them, but I have all my notifications turned off, you know, cause it was just too much. LinkedIn can be very aggro about that. But, but I, I do know that it is a robust network that millions of people use all the time and a great way, yeah, to get gigs and, and meet like-minded people and perhaps get a job in the end or be able to offer somebody a job that, that you like. And so this is pretty cool. The influencer part of LinkedIn always rubbed me the wrong way because you couldn't just say, well, I am one. <laughs> I influence people. It's like, no, you have to be cool enough to be an influencer. You, you know, have it's to that influence me thing. that you're an influence. Yeah. Oh, but, so you, do you have to, they get to choose? Yeah. Who you, oh, yes, yeah. For, for the influencer okay. thing, the creator thing opens that up and says, you know what, we, you, just pick it yourself. You're fine. right. It's yeah. it's the same thing as being verified, which I don't like either. I just don't like that sort of thing. It's like, well, says who? But uh, but yeah, as a creator, I think if you if you think LinkedIn is a place that you can do networking, then this is just one more reason that it makes a little bit more sense for you if you're a video person. Hi, I'm Tom Merritt. I have more than 20 years as a content creator online. Uh, if you would like to hire me as a consultant. Uh, please check out my LinkedIn profile below. And then sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's T -Mobile great. You're going to get hired yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So easy. T-Mobile may need to hire you, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let, let's find out. So T-Mobile USA announced Monday that it will be the first mobile carrier to make the Google Messages RCS app the default on its Android phones. Uh, T-Mobile is also going to start promoting Pixel phones and drop its TV service in favor of YouTube TV. Yep. T-Mobile announced that it will stop offering its T-Vision. TV vision Is that how you... T-Vision. Yeah, I know. T-Vision. Okay. It, it had problems right from yeah. the beginning. It yeah, right. it, was, it was already messed up right there. Streaming service as of April 29th. T-Mobile is offering $10 off of YouTube TV and Philo as an alternative for its T-Vision subscribers. All T-Mobile subscribers can get the discount starting April 6th. The T-Vision hub... 4K streaming dongle will feature YouTube TV. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. When, like, when I heard about this, this story, it broke yesterday. I'm like, 
Quibi 2.0? Like, <laughs> like, what just, it, uh, it didn't have as much press as Quibi. What That's happened? Kind like, of, they just, they, yeah. They, just they didn't make any content for it. Uh, you know what? I, I could explain what happened. Uh, T-Mobile okay. wanted to get into the the over-the-top streaming uh, business. They wanted to compete with Hulu Live and YouTube TV and Sling, uh, which is not a, not a bad idea. Uh, and so they thought they could be clever because Viacom and Discovery both had higher restrictions on how much they would charge and what you could do with their channels. And so everybody either included Viacom and had a higher price like AT&T or just didn't have Viacom channels like Hulu Live. What T-Mobile thought they could do is say, we'll have two base packages because Viacom requires their channels be in the base package. We'll have two base packages. We'll put all the Viacom and Discovery stuff in one base package and everything else in the other base package, but they'll both be base packages. And that way we could separate out the costs. Viacom very quickly was like, no, that is not okay. Put the hammer down. T-Mobile then had to take all the Viacom and Discovery channels, put them into the main package, which then they could no longer uh, make the price work out. Uh, and that's why five months later, they're like, yeah, no, this this just isn't going to work because we can't do our little clever workaround and the finances don't work the, if, if we have to combine it all. This is why they need you to be their consultant, because who did not plan for this? They just thought they wouldn't get they thought they were within the terms of the contract and Viacom disagreed. Hmm. As did Discovery. So. So yeah, uh, so instead uh, they're doing all this stuff with Google and, and made sense of like, well, they're gonna, you know, do all this partnership with Google. Like, why not just yeah. say fine? You know what? You're better at this than we are. Let's just make YouTube <laughs> TV uh, the default yeah. TV service on the T Vision Hub. They're gonna still sell the dongle. They're gonna still bundle it in with their services. It'll just be from Google instead of from them. I mean, <laughs> YouTube TV is one of many options that people have, but. It's always been my favorite. It works pretty well. I can see where T-Mobile is like, what, you know, how do we iterate off of this? It's just easier to use that. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the downside here is we lose another competitor. Right. Uh, but, you know, there's still I, I, several. I see this happening. I think I think there's going to be a, a domino effect. We can talk more about this at another time. I think it's going to be a domino effect that these, you know, more boutique streaming services having to kind of realize yeah, we might need to either fold oh, I, in with someone else, and yeah. I think you're right. We're gonna have we're gonna have more shakeout. Uh, Philo is included here, and Philo is the via has Viacom and Discovery channels on it, uh, and I wonder how much longer Philo holds out in this world. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. The Cleveland Clinic will become the first private sector company with an on-premises IBM quantum computer as part of a 10-year collaboration with the company. The Cleveland Clinic will use this discovery accelerator in its new global center for pathogen research and human health and is committing to purchasing a 1,000 qubit IBM uh, next generation quantum system in the future. So this is the first of a whole rollout. Researchers can use these tools to parse data related to things like genomics, single cell transcriptomics, population health, clinical applications, chemical and drug discovery, just to name a few. Yeah, so this is uh, kind of like in the 60s, maybe even into the 50s, when uh, these big mainframe computers, you know, they called them electronic brains sometimes back then, mm -hmm. uh, started started to be bought, like a company actually bought a computer for itself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this is kind of one of those milestones of like, hey, an actual private company is buying an IBM quantum system, a uh, thousand plus qubits. It's very special purpose right now, you know, but Cleveland Clinic says it fits our purposes. We're doing genomics and transcriptomics and, and health and clinical applications. And that that's what we'll use it for. It won't be a general purpose computer for them. It's very specialty, very expensive, but worth it if you're Cleveland Clinic, I guess. Well, this is the kind of story where I say, okay, <laughs> probably helpful to you in what way? So to know, oh, these are the ways that researchers here, because Cleveland Clinic is, you know, world renowned as 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 a place uh, that a lot of good stuff is coming out of. This is what th th this is how our, you know, best and brightest are going to be helped by being able to crunch the kind of data that this quantum computer and computing in general uh, can can handle in the future. Yeah. It reminds me of that scene in Mad Men. Uh, where where they bought a computer and put it in a big room in the I don't advertising even remember agency. That scene. 
and they they you know they were talking about like is this going to replace people it was like all mm-hmm. the stuff and it, it it took up a whole room and yeah. And we're still asking ourselves that question every day. And it was IBM in Mad Men. <laughs> Look at that. Still <laughs> IBM. Yep. Still the one doing it. Right, All right, right, let's check out the mailbag. So when Trisha Hersberger was with us on the show yesterday, we were talking about the new naming of Xbox Network. And Brian wrote in and said, I think it's important to note that the network in Xbox Network is not capitalized, not capitalized, that N specifically. This is presumably because Xbox Network is just infrastructure. It's not a product or a service being marketed to end users. Considering the increasing number of activities that no longer require Xbox Live, such as streaming services like Netflix, messaging, uh, soon party chat, and playing free to play games online, it makes sense to differentiate the Xbox Live service from the network that it runs on. I mean, He's not wrong. He's, par- <laughs> he's parsing it a little close. It's a little bit of Kremlinology, like, and the reason it's a lowercase n. But also, I could totally see a, a, a group of marketing people uh, brainstorming the name and saying, let's make the n lowercase to sort of indicate that this that is really a, just that a, it's just it's yeah. a network. Oh, totally. Yeah. I could totally see that. <laughs> you know, it's not a proper noun network, just a network. Yeah. Shouldn't that end be lowercase? What do you think? Uh, let's have three meetings over the next six weeks to decide on that. And then they, uh, they decided on it. I mean, oh, I mean they I called me in to more. Seattle on it. You know, I flew in last Did week. You? To, Did you? Yeah, you were were yeah. you a big N or a small N? <laughs> uh, I, I, was, I was for the big N. You were yeah. team big N. Um, all right. I was team mm, big N. Yeah, yeah. it didn't, didn't work no, out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry that you didn't win that battle. But maybe next yeah. time. Well, well, I got a free flight, so it was fine. You hey, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. If you have feedback <laughs> of anything that we talk about on past shows or something that we might talk on, uh, about on a future show, please do send us an email because we love to hear from you. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We also like to shout out patrons at our master and grandmaster levels. Today, they include Linnell Lane, Dr. X17, and Paul Reese. We also want to thank our brand new bosses, Gil Longo and John Gross. Both just started backing us on Patreon. So thank you to you our new bosses. Also, thanks to Lamar Wilson for being with us today. Lamar, what's been happening since we saw you last? So much stuff. No, actually, not that much. But uh, I just put a video off this morning. Um, uh, it's end of the month, and I, a lot of people ask, hey, what are you playing on on the Xbox Game Pass? Because, you know, a lot of people still don't understand what that great subscription service is. So I did a v- video showing, you know, the, the games I, I'm recommending, and, and then I'm having an audience recommend me some games and it's you know it's been pretty fun so you can check that out at youtube.com slash lamar wilson i am at lamar wilson everywhere on the internet folks uh we're just a few weeks away from our crossover show with this week in science that'll happen saturday april 17th at 4 p.m pacific join me sarah and roger along with dr kiki blair and justin from twists uh and we want to know what you'd like us to talk about we're going to have technology and science and the, the the whole of both of those worlds to choose from as we tag team on this show. So email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, like KV did. KV said, as the world gets more automated and electrified, it would be great to explore the upcoming developments in the science and technology for both stored energy, like chemical and non-chemical batteries, and power generation, like solar, wind, hydro, and dare I say, fusion. That's a great idea. Uh, for a topic. So get get your topic in too. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. The show happens once again, April 17th at 4 p.m. Pacific. We are live on this very show, Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Thanks for joining us live. If you can, always good to have you. And we're going to do this all again tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>